So here's the pile of parts so far. Got a few more to clean and strip of paint and uh, get polished up. Got a little carried away with the polishing, but might as well make it look good while we're at it. Well, I had a bunch of video left over from the, when I was repairing the apron, so I thought I'd just throw some of it together. In case anybody ever has one of these apart, I'm just trying to fill in the rough castings to be able to repaint the apron ca casting. You don't, you don't realize how rough they are until you strip the filler and paint off them. After putting a bondo on and sanding it, I put a spotting putty on and, and uh, sanded that down and got it ready for paint. This is just something I came up with for masking off these parts for uh, paint. I covered the part with uh, masking tape and then just kind of worked my way around with the ball peen hammer, kind of the way you'd make a kind of way you make a gasket. But it worked pretty good. Uh, took mask off the parts that I didn't want to get paint on. Make it a little easier to clean up later. After getting everything masked off, it was time for painting. Lots of painting. Uh, the other, the other day in one of his videos, Adam Booth mentioned that he does not like to paint machinery, and I have to agree with him. It's not my favorite thing to do with machines. I'd rather make something with them than paint them. But I got to admit, once they're cleaned up and painted, it is kind of nice to have them cleaned up and painted. Here's the apron after the bondo and paint are on it. And uh, it is nice to have them cleaned up once they're done. I just wish someone else would do it for me. After painting, I had to go around and clean the paint that had gone over onto the uh, ceiling surfaces where you bolt the front and rear half of the apron together. little uh, acetone after the scraping to clean up any residue left over. Put a little bit of non-hardening gasket compound on just a real thin layer to give it a good seal. The sight glass on the apron that just shows the oil level in the apron was uh, you know, grunged up over, I don't know, 70 years of use. I took a face shield and cut out a new one had to chase the threads out, the bondo and stuff had kind of gotten in there. So chase those out, scrape to the uh, surface that the sight glass sits on, nice and clean. Put it in with a little bit of the uh, Type 2 non-hardening sealer. And I put a little, just a little bit around the edge of the sight glass to seal it to the cover to keep it from leaking and uh, then put the whole thing back on back together and actually have a sight glass that you can see through before you had to have a flashlight or something to shine in and then you kind of got a hint about what the oil level was but it was hard to tell exactly what it was clean up the label that was on the paper and I spray adhesive it to a block of aluminum Shot it with a little paint and then just kind of gently sanded the paint off. It turned out pretty good. On the apron lever that engages the lead screw, the key had worn almost halfway through. You can see that used to be a square key. It worn about halfway through. The interesting thing is the key is kind of peened over. The corners of the key is peened over so that it is uh, retained in the lever. It, it's held in by the bracket that sits on either side of the key. But for some reason, over and that holds it in while the uh, I guess makes it easier to install but it's actually held in by the edges of that bracket the very first thing I turned on the lathe was this hand wheel the hand wheel was that was broken that came with the lathe I ordered this one from Reed supply and um, so this is my very first attempt at ever turning anything on a metal lathe and you can see it wasn't very pretty I just kind of made a series of straight cuts around it and wasn't very pretty, so I thought I'd better 
make it look a little better. So after a considerable time with a form tool and uh, sandpaper and scotch bright, got an actual respectable looking handle that uh, matches the lathe a little better now. The uh, half nuts were in really good shape. There's a few little spots where you can see where chips kind of got embedded in the, the Babbitt material. This is actually a Babbitt uh, type uh, half nut, but um, overall I was really happy. I was worried that it'd be show a lot of wear, but as you can see, they, uh, they cleaned up really nicely and real happy with their condition. Of course, my handy bracket for holding it did not allow me to get the half nuts back together. One of those things, it's like, what was I thinking? But I uh, pulled the screw off with the bracket on, was able to get the uh, half nuts back in there where they belong. Taper pin holds the uh, handle, the half nut handle, onto the shaft that runs that cam that engages and loosens them. I'm just continuing with the reassembly, the big gear that runs the um, longitudinal feed along the axis of the lathe. It's actually driven by that that uh, little gear pinion gear goes onto the handle. This is the uh, clutch assembly for the power feed on the longitudinal feed. It's a little bit tricky to get things together. You kind of have to pull gears out and slide them in together. But with a little patience, fiddling it, it'll all go together. This is just look at the close up of the cone and the uh, worm gear. That's how the feed drive that cone presses into that worm gear and. Uh, drives the power feeds. So as that lever, your lever pushes in on that and uh, pushes that cone into the, into the worm gear. Just, I make it look like things went to wet together easily here, but there was a lot of fiddling and a lot of things I put together and took apart because I'd put them together in the wrong order. So, like I said, a little patience and and you know kind of paying attention to what's binding where and don't start beating on things so you're confident you've got everything where it belongs and uh, you know you can get it back together uh, there's some uh, dowel pins that align things yeah, pretty tight fit but we'll whack them with the dead blow took care of it The Allen screws that hold the back half of the apron on are different lengths, so there was a little bit of trial and error to get the right bolts in the right holes. And the worm that drives the longitudinal feed goes on. Um, that's the housing that's repaired. You can see the bronze bushing there. That, uh, for the repair on that chewed up surface on the worm. And in the end, the housing also. To get the apron back on, I had to put the brackets on the hold the ends of the. It's the end of the lead screw, and then below it is the uh, shaft that engages the lead screw, reversing the forward and reverse lever. back together, making sure everything works. And a polished and painted apron. I had, had to take the uh, tailstock off to get the apron off, obviously, and uh, thought, well, I had it apart, and I was going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit. Here we have the tailstock casting. I 
idea of the scale of this monster. From looking on the Practical Machinists and some other sites of people who've restored Hendies, I think these uh, wartime Hendies castings were a lot rougher than the uh, ones that were not. Uh, talking to James McDermott or Hendy Man of the Practical Machinists Forum. A lot of these lathes during the war were delivered with uh, wartime finish, where they didn't uh, didn't get as much finish work done as they would typically have gotten. Uh, my carriage and cross and uh, compound and cross slide look like they never they came without paint and were painted later, um, which, according to. Mr. McDermott was not uncommon during the war, especially since this was going to a uh, nuclear research facility. This, lab, this went to UCLA's nuclear engineering department in 1943. So apparently they didn't get quite the same care that um, prior machines and then later machines got. Just means a little more filler, I guess. Along with the tailstock, here's the uh, Quill got a number four Morse taper in it. And it's got these two um, you know, like set screws that go in, and that's what locks in on the taper of the taper shank tools. Uh, so I presume they're adjustable if you needed to. Um, the screw's got a self ejecting feature on it so you don't have to uh, use the slot for pulling the tapers out but taper tooling out but this is there anyway but it's a big quilt got a nice bronze screw in the end one problem I've had is some of my larger taper shank drills bottom out against the face of the quill before the taper seat so there's I may end up having to face this down a little bit because it should be nice to use some of those bigger taper shank drills um, see there's a I don't know if you can see there's a scale it's got full six inch travel on the quill I could afford to shave a little bit off to uh, use that tamper shank drilling, so I'm tooling. I'm still debating that. That's kind of a no going back from something like that. There's a handle for the lock on the tailstock. You can see someone did a nice nickel, looks like a nickel arc repair on it. I get a little Bondo work on it. Made it look good. Here's a really bad picture of them. The handles after I got them all painted. And here's the tailstock all Bondoed and ready to go. Actually I hadn't finished sanding it here but here it is with the paint on it. Parts polished and back on the lathe. The uh, locking mechanism for the tail is kind of interesting. It's got a it swivels off the pin on the this pin that's being put in on the front and then is uh, and those two locking blocks slide between the sides of the bed and uh, this threaded piece goes up into the handle and as you rotate the handle, that clamps this clamps the assembly uh, onto the ways. There it goes up in, and there's n the nut that's being placed on there is adjustable, so you can kind of adjust where the where the handle locks. So as you swing the handle, it uh, tightens and loosens the tailstock. But it's a pretty solid clamping mechanism, and I've never had any problems with it. Not staying where I put it. I did manage to remove the tailstock once by lifting it, but that was 10 years ago, and I'm smarter now and use the engine hoist because it's a heavy, heavy thing. But the uh, 
everything cleaned up and adjusting just adjusting the nut on the bottom for so that that'll handle clamp it into place there it is painted and cleaned and adjusted and ready to go to work again the uh, hand wheel and screw have always amazed me at how uh, how smoothly nicely they work now if I could just talk someone into giving the rest of the lathe that treatment I'd be set and just kind of as a teaser there's something else that uh, followed me home recently showed up on the local classifieds and I couldn't resist it is a Hindi after all 1910 so maybe there'll be some video on that. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.